Hello, my friend. Welcome to Tammy Anderson Art. This is the first official video of 2022, and it's going to be a fun project. With just a few simple art supplies, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a beautiful painting such as this one here. So stay tuned. That's coming up next. So let's go over supplies. Now today I am working on a 12 by 16 Da Vinci Pro panel. I buy these through Jerry's Artorama or Blick and they are a really beautiful panel to work on. They have two inch thick natural wood sides which I have covered with tape right now. I'm going to be using some alcohol inks. I will list the colors in the description below and I'm going to be using some 91% alcohol, just isopropyl alcohol. You can use 99%. You can use 70%, but it has a lot of water in it. So uh, I tend not to use that one, but it does work. And then you're going to need some type of a blowing device that has heat. My little mini Joe Blow hairdryer works beautifully for that. That is also in the description. So I consider alcohol inks to be another type of fluid art. They are fluid and we create art with them. Um, they are so easy to work with. It's so hard to create mud when using different colors together. And even if you do create a brownish color, you can always add more alcohol to that area and drop in some more brighter color to get rid of it. And I'm gonna show you all of that in this piece. Now, everybody has their preferred way of doing this. I myself like to douse the canvas that I'm working in on with alcohol first so that the colors have something to float on top of. And for me, they tend to blend better together. It's a pretty straightforward process. I put down some regular alcohol and then I start dripping my colors into that alcohol. I put the greens and the blues and the purples around the outer edge and then the pink and the yellow in the center. However, you can use whatever colors you want. And um, if I had to suggest a starter pack, there is one by Jacquard called the Exciter Pack, and I have it in my Amazon shop. I'll be sure to link that below for you. And it's got, you know, the primary colors and a few extra. Again, alcohol inks are very easy to use, and you can really create a magical piece of art with them. The key thing that I will say is that you really should use either Yupo paper, which is created for alcohol inks. They also sell a, a craft plastic paper now, or a panel that is very smooth, like these Da Vinci Pro panels. Now I call it panel. It does have sides, however. Technically, or typically, when you hear the word panel, you think of a flat piece of wood. This does have sides to it, but they do sell actual panels that have no sides for alcohol inks also. And you want something with a smooth surface so that the alcohol inks will glide along it easily. Canvas can be used for alcohol inks, but there's prep work that you have to do. And I find that it just doesn't work good enough. So I added a, all of my color and then a little more alcohol in there. And then what you see here is what you get. I just blow the colors around until I'm happy with how it looks. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just blowing them around and you're going to see the, the pink and the yellow created that beautiful orange. You'll get all different shades of, of a color that you're using once this is dry, if you re-wet it with more alcohol, you'll get either, even more shades of that color. If 
you have these, I urge you to explore with them. If you don't have them, I would highly suggest if you're into art and want to learn different things, this is a really fun, easy one to learn. Sometimes when ink pools up in an area, it will create these hard lines. So I'm just showing you here how I kind of get rid of those. I'll put another drop of alcohol down and then add more color and break it up. Another way to do that is to actually use a paintbrush that you dip in alcohol. And then I'm talking about clear alcohol now. And then just kind of smooth that line out. I'm going to be showing you how to do that in a moment. There's nothing wrong with those lines. Some people like them and some don't. It's just whatever's pleasing to your eye. So I'm just kind of showing you here how easy it is to change the look and the composition of an area. I will warn you, however, it is very fun and very addictive, and it's very easy to go through a bottle of alcohol when you're having so much fun. So here I felt like the, the side was just a little too dull, so I added in some more pink and yellow and brightened up that area. And then up at the, the top left-ish side of the canvas, I also end up changing that a little bit and making it a little more green, which I also just did in that bottom corner there. So once you're done adding your colors, you're going to want to make sure this piece is thoroughly dry before you go on to the next step. And alcohol inks dry rather quickly. So I would say about a half hour and you're good to go. So as I may have mentioned, they're very unforgiving. If you don't like the way your piece looks when you're done, you can literally pour some alcohol on it, blow it around, and come up with an entirely different piece. Uh, the one thing that really attracts me to doing this type of art is the vibrancy of the colors. And you'll find even if you use a lot of alcohol and go over the same area multiple times, they're still really vibrant. So you're going to see here now, I want to try to smooth out that area where that green is. So I just dipped my brush in some rubbing alcohol and kind of just smoothed it out. And then I'll add a little more alcohol and take away some color. because I just wasn't liking that pea green color. So what I do is just pour a little cup of rubbing alcohol and dip the brush into it, wipe off some of the color, and then uh, I'll go back and add in some alcohol to that area. And I'll add a few drops of color. In this case, I did the yellow and the teal so that I can make a pretty greenish color. Another thing you can do is you could take your paintbrush and put the colored alcohol directly on it and then outline some of your areas or touch up some areas that you may not like. A month or two ago, I showed you a new uh, cool glass dip pen I bought. Those are great for alcohol inks. Uh, if you want to do designs on your piece, it's... Uh, really fun to play with. You just pour a little bit of that alcohol on the nib and draw away. So now that that's done, I'm going to come in and black out some of the areas. You'll notice I have gloves on. You should always wear gloves when you're going to have your hands on your canvas if you're going to use resin to finish your painting with. This will cut down on pits and it will stop the transmission of the oil on your hands that your body naturally produces. It'll stop those from transmitting to the canvas. A lot of times people will say, I get 
pitting or rejection around the edge of my canvas. And that is why. That's where we pick up our canvases with our hands and we hold them and look at them. And then when you go to do resin, there's some oil left behind from your skin and it rejects. So me wearing gloves is going to help that to not happen. So I'm just taking some fluid carbon black paint from Golden here and I'm going to black out this area that I just outlined with a black marker. When I was working on this piece, I was envisioning almost a blast of color uh, not northern lights, but uh, galaxy-ish, we'll say, where I have a beautiful twinkling night sky with colors bursting all over the place. So that's what we're going for here. And uh, I think that I got what I wanted. When it comes to the outer edge, really take your time with that. Go nice and slow so that you don't hit an area by accident. Uh, I've rushed a lot of times doing stuff like this, and I've learned my lesson to go nice and slow and pay attention. So now that that's done, the next step is optional when using these boards. You can either leave the natural wood or you can paint them. I wanted to black it out. I wanted the main focus to be those two end pieces. So I just took some more of the black fluid paint and brushed it on. Now, you don't have to use fluid paint. You can use tube paint or any type of black paint that you may have. So now it's time for some fun once that dries. It's time to add in our glitter. Now when I do the glitter, which by the way is mixed with clear glue, when I do these, these pieces with alcohol ink, I look at the lines in the piece and how they're flowing and almost like a puzzle, I'll paint in just certain areas or Think about it like an agate stone or a geode, how there's only crystals in some portions of those pieces of rock. So that's what, how I look at these alcohol ink pieces. And I just choose some random areas that I think it would look good in. And I paint it by hand, nice and slow, and then I let it dry. And just an FYI, anytime you see that paintbrush going fast like this, it means I sped up the video a little bit because I want to be considerate of your time. So this is just some glitter, some holographic glitter that I'm going to sprinkle over that wet glitter that I put down just to add a little more sparkle. And yes, you can mix it right in with the other glitter, I just think it, it blings a little bit more if you just sprinkle it on top. But um, I also took some of that glitter and lightly sprinkled it over just the black area. So now that I'm getting close to being done with this and time to resonate, I just want to say thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Uh, please consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I have over 400 learning tutorials on everything from acrylic pouring techniques, all for beginners, and resin art, mixed media, fluid art, uh, such as alcohol inks. There's just a lot of videos under my channel, so be sure to check it out. So let's talk about resin really quick. I'm using KS Resin. There's a discount in the description below. It is a 
45 minute to an hour working resin, but when working with alcohol inks, you have to be sure to seal them first. They are not light fast, so they will dull and fade from the sun, especially uh, if you don't protect them with a UV protectant. So I went outside and sprayed this painting twice and let it dry. I do not have that on camera, but I did it. I let it dry and now it's ready. For those using these mixing cups that are reusable, do you see all of those little drops of dried resin on the inside of the cup? I never use these when it's the final coat of resin for my piece, and here is why. When you're mixing the resin and you don't get every one of those little pearls off, which is very hard to do, it can incorporate back into your new resin that you're mixing up, and then when you go to pour it, and you're trying to, to torch it and you're seeing these little bubbles and you can't get them to pop, it can very well be from those cups. That's just a little pro tip for you. So I'll use them on the first coat I'm putting down because I always do two coats. But if you're a person that likes to put on just one coat of resin, I highly suggest you get every single one of those little beads of dried resin out of that cup or do not use those because they will affect your finish. Back to the piece on hand though. I mixed up my KS resin, which is a two part resin, equal parts of A and B for three minutes and poured it on the surface of my painting. Now I'm just kind of massaging the top of the painting with it. I will then come back and pour some over the edges rub down the edges and then I'll torch it and put it to bed. I tell you, there's nothing like a coat of resin over a painting. It just really brings those colors back to life in ways that no other finish can. Yes, it's a little more expensive, but I just, I love it. <laughs> So I, I push the resin up to the edges and over a little bit, but I always reserve enough just to pour around the edges so that it drips over nice and thick. And then I'll take my hand and smear it all down those sides. Let's talk about bubbles for a minute. To pop the bubbles, I highly recommend a culinary torch. I have one in my Amazon shop that's very easy to use. A heat gun will pop bubbles, but the heat is not hot enough to penetrate the surface and get bubbles that are underneath the surface. It will just pop the bubbles that are on the surface. And what happens when you use a heat gun sometimes is you have to wait for the bubbles to rise and then you go to use the heat gun and the resin's already setting up and it can scorch the resin or cause pits. So if you are one that uses a heat gun because you're afraid of a torch, just remember that you have to be careful about using that heat gun after a certain point, depending on what your resin tells you to do. All resins are different with directions. So here it is all covered. It is so pretty. I am so happy with this piece. I just, the little bit of twinkle in the black sky and the bright, bold, beautiful, sparkling colors in the background. I, I just, or in the foreground, I should say forefront, <laughs> up in the front. Um, the, it just, it made me happy. It's winter time here in Connecticut. It's cold. It's snowing. It's just dreary. Uh, it's dark at 5 p.m. And I needed some bright in my life. So this definitely was the fix I was looking for. 
I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, please, on your way out, remember to subscribe and click like if you are new here. And if you're not new, please remember to click like. It helps my channel. It helps when you comment. It helps when you use the links in the description. Uh, all of that matters. So thank you for those that do. And uh, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to check out all of my social media sites. I am now on TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook. We have a Facebook group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group. You can join us over there, make friends with people that like the same thing that you do, and check out some pretty art. I'll give you a view of it the next day out in the gloomy sky. I'm sorry you're seeing the clouds in the black, but uh, resin is extremely hard to film. So if you're interested in this piece, give me a holler. Art by Tammy at yahoo.com. I love you all. Thank you for joining me and happy pouring.